What's up people, welcome to my channel. It's the first time I'm trying a voiceover. Hope it's fun. Now let's play some Mafia 2. Let's go amigo, get in the car. It's time to do some Mafia stuff. the way we came in and get on the main highway going west. Don't go back through the city. Okay, man. So I've already got a navigator with me. Okay, is the place. Go right up. the other way. It's gonna be three times longer this way. Just keep your ass seated man, let me drive. So how's it feel to be back? Good. I feel a lot better with some money in my pocket. Hey, what's the rush? Money don't buy you happiness, you know. Get the fuck out of here. I was just fucking with you. Don't worry about the money. This little job is just the beginning. Pretty soon you'll be rolling in it. So, Sand Island still the same shithole it was when I left? No, no, the place actually ain't too bad now. Oh shit. How the hell that happened? All the movies flew south for the winter. Of course it's still a shithole, Vito. You've only been gone a couple of years. Gonna take a lot longer than that for that neighborhood to turn around. Them people multiply like rabbits. What are you gonna do? It's even worse than when we was kids. They even got some kind of gang there now. What's their fucking name? Uh, the Beamers, the Boomers, something like that. I don't fucking know. Oh, that's just fucking great. Hey, what are you worried about? They're animals. All they do is sell dope and kill each other. They ain't gonna bother a guy like you. And even if they do, that's why I gave you that pistol. Well, by the way, you carrying a gun now? What's the deal with that? Can't do business without it these days, especially in this fucking neighborhood. You, uh, really know how to inspire confidence, you know that? I'm Lowell Harris. God Save the Queen is the British national anthem. But as of today, so Londoners are, are singing a new up, song. And God, my we voice love those Spitfires. Maybe the more popular That's song now, man. as British Spitfire fighter planes have finally taken out a key Nazi factory. One that produced fuel for none other than the dreaded V-2 rocket. After several weeks of merciless punishment by this long-range menace, Londoners can breathe a sigh of relief now that the Royal Air Force appears to have severely crippled the Nazi terror for the foreseeable future. For Press Radio News, I'm Lowell Harris. That cream-colored baby over there. 
Be careful. Do it quick and get the fuck out of there. Break a window if you have to and go. I'll wait for you back at Mike's. What if I run into problems? Then you deal with them. Look, consider this a test. If you fail, I hear they're hiring down at the factory. Right, just asking. Good luck, pal. I see you back at Mike's. So, we are here at the place and we need to steal the cream colored Walter Coupe. Let's have a look around. Hey, what the fuck are you doing over there? What the fuck are you doing over here, man? Ah, oh, shit. Eat this. Take this. Oh, you got some moves. Take this asshole. Fuck yeah. What you doing, motherfucker? You motherfucker. Fuck. <laughs>
Radio News. I'm Lowell Harris. The sky was raining devastation on the Nazi headquarters and surrounding buildings in Berlin just one week ago. In a massive show of strength, almost 1,000 B-17 flying fortresses blanketed the capital of the Third Reich with bombs in a massive and daring raid conducted by the U.S. Army Air Forces. The German capital is expected to fall into Allied hands within the coming weeks. Hey, mission accomplished. How'd it go? Yeah, piece of cake. Except for the fact that the car belonged to a bunch of moolies who immediately tried to kill me right after you left. Eh, uh, probably the bombers. Hunters their neighborhood. Guys like that, you don't have to worry about them. They just hang out on the street, talk shit, steal shit, and smoke dope. <sighs> Let's see what we got here. Mmm, nice. No stains. Clean. Where the lowlife get the money for this? Probably stole it himself. It's nice, though. How much did I say I'd give you for it again? Six hundred. <laughs> oh, I like you, buddy, Joe. Here's your four hundred bucks. Stop by again, okay? We can do some more business. Yeah, you bet, Mike. I see you, Mike. I'll stop by again real soon. All Me right, too. boys. I'll see you later. Here's your three hundred bananas. I'm taking my cut as the middleman. Next time, you're on your own. All right. Thanks, Joe. All right, let's go home. I'm exhausted. Let's go then. By a country road, while roses grow, that need my special care. <laughs> so I haven't time. Be a millionaire And a cheerful crook On a mountainside Is sad When I'm not there So I haven't time To be a millionaire And a friendly gang of robins Are free When I forget I'm the second tenor in their quartet. Oh, with all the things I have to do, I'm very much aware. If I wish for wealth, it would be. You should take the highway, Vito. How many times do I have to tell you, shut the fuck up? Because I haven't. All right, you pulled off that job without fucking it up. Nice going. Yeah, but I almost got my ass kicked. I didn't live through the war just to die in Sand Island. Hey, that's all part of the deal, pal. Take it or leave it. Besides, it ain't like you're qualified for anything else. Uh, I guess you're right. Don't worry about it. It's all gonna be a piece of cake. Uh, what's the story with Bruski? Mike's a good guy to know. He's a little grouchy, but he's always got a scam going. He deals with stolen cars mostly. Spent some time inside a while back. I heard he used to stick up gas stations back in the day. You gonna make him pay the cleaning bill for your jacket? Nah, I'll let that one slide. I do a lot of business with the guy. Plus, he's got one hell of a temper. One time we was at the track and some mitts spilled a beer on his wind ticket. 
Mike beat the shit out of him until he went blind in one eye. A lousy ten bucks. He sounds like kind of a scumbag. Hey, you just got an out of hand to these people. That Mike's a pussycat compared to some of the guys that Mexicans you shipped out. You'll see. around here. I don't want to leave this thing out in the street. Yeah, that's why you're parking your car next to mine in the garage. The streets are full of criminals these days. Yeah, the neighborhood ain't what it used to be, huh? There's a Open the fucking door. If you're hungry, there's some food in the refrigerator. 
You hungry, Vito? Take whatever you want from the fridge. Oh, beer. I need beer. Joe's pleasure, pal. It's Vito speaking. Vito, why didn't you come home last night? I was worried sick. Mama? I didn't know you had Joe's number. And whose phone is this? So have you spoken to Mr. Papalardo? Find yourself a job? Yeah, he told me to come by and see him today. Hopefully he's got some work for me. Okay, Vito. Good luck, mio bambino. All right, bye, Mama. Need work, man. Need to freshen up first. Where the fuck is the exit, man? What the fuck is this? That's not mine. Bloody Joe. And that's the exit. What you doing, old lady? Everyone's a oh. creeper, <laughs> I lost. What's the matter? Nothing good on the radio? Mind your beeswax, kid. Hey, turn that down in there! If you don't turn that crap down, I'm gonna call the cops!
Holy shit, that's far. I need to get a car. Back to the garage, boy. I will kill you! As President Roosevelt is reported to be meeting with the leaders of Great Britain and the Soviet Union to determine how Europe will be divided amongst the Allies after Germany's imminent defeat. The meeting, which is taking place at a secret location, once again puts together the men who have come to be known as the Big Three. Our own President Franklin Roosevelt, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and Joseph Stalin of the Soviet Union. Military experts are hoping this conference will result in an even stronger relationship between the United States and Great Britain and strengthen with the Soviet Union or press
give you a fine for this. Sorry, officer. Yeah. Take it and go. Thank you, officer. Alright, I don't want to see your face again. The feeling's mutual, man. Supporting our troops abroad. Give them one from Empire Bay, boys. Stupid ass driver.
Help! Close the door. It's windy. What do you want? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for a Mr. Papalotto. Oh, yeah? Why? My name's Vito Scaletta. My old man used to work for him, and I'm looking for a job, so I came here. Well, you're in the right spot, sonny boy. Federico Papayato at your service. You can call me Derek. I think I remember your dad. Good guy, but drank like a fish. What's he up to these days? He's dead. Oh, well, we all gotta go sometime. Right, Steve? Sure, Derek. So you need a job, huh? Well, you're in luck. We just got a new shipment to unload. Steve will show you around. Now scram, my steak's getting cold. Uh, follow me. Load this pile of crates onto that truck. When you're done, you get ten bucks. If something gets lost or broken, you get nothing. Start now and don't take all day. Okay, let's load them up. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Who the fuck wants to move boxes around all goddamn day? All this for ten lousy bucks? You gotta be kidding me. minutes I already hate him. This chicken shit money.
Hey, you done? Yeah, I'm done. And you can keep the ten bucks. When I said I needed a job, I didn't mean slave labor. Whatever. Get the fuck out of here, then. Don't show your face around here again. Yeah, don't worry. I can make a hundred times more working for Barbaro Incorporated. Wait, you said Barbaro? Joe Barbaro? Yeah, so what? Shit. Nobody who works with Joe would carry crates for ten bucks. What the hell are you doing? Come with me. What now? Well, this one don't like manual labor. What the fuck? Said he works with Joe Barbaro. Bullshit. Who want to load crates if he works with Joe? You'll have to explain this one to me, sonny boy. What's your story? Uh, well, my mother wanted me to come talk to you about an honest job, but I need some real money, so this ain't gonna cut it. <laughs> Them women, they're all the same. Right, Steve? Sure, Derek. She doesn't want you hanging around with Joe, right? <laughs> My mother was the same way. Look what become of me. Union boss. I got the whole fucking waterfront under my thumb. So how's Joe? Pretty good, I guess. How'd you meet up with him? Oh, we go way back to the old neighborhood. I just come back from overseas and he's putting me up until I can get back on my feet. Listen, uh, you gotta understand, a person in my position has gotta be careful. Certainly. So you won't mind if I give Joe a call, right? Nah, no, go ahead. Now, where'd I put his number? Hey, here it is. He might not be home. That wouldn't be good. Hi, right, Joe. Hey, this is Derek. Listen, I got this guy here. Uh, what'd you say your name was? Vito. Vito. He's looking for a job. He says he's a friend of yours. A good friend. I just wanted to check with you first. Uh-huh. Sure. War hero and all that shit. All right, all right. Thanks, then. I'll talk to you later. Sorry, pal. I had to check you out. Joe says you just come back from Italy. You must be able to handle yourself. You want to make a little more money? I got just the thing. The guys here at the port are supposed to pay a monthly fee to the barber, but half of them never cough it up. I need someone to give them a little nudge. Ten bucks a man. What if they don't need a haircut? Well, then you'll have to convince them otherwise. I see. What if somebody makes a fuss? Then you kick the shit out of them. Well, let's say you teach them a lesson that doesn't require that they miss work. You got it? Which is why Steve ain't doing the job. Right, Steve? Right, boss. Collect at least 150 bucks, I give you 50. Just for walking around, taking it in the Sierra, meeting new people. Easy fucking money, eh? What do you say? Yeah, hey, it's better than lugging crates around. All right, then. Get going. Let's kick some ass now.
I'm here to collect the fee for the barber. Again? I don't even go to the damn barber. Here, you give it to the Robin son of a bitch. Thanks. Appreciate your cooperation. Hey, pal. Derek needs you to pay the fee for the barber. You've got the wrong guy, pal. My wife cuts my hair. Yeah, that's sweet. But while you work here, you get a haircut when Derek says. Oh! Okay, okay, enough already. Here's your fucking money. Yeah, glad you decided to reconsider. Hey, Derek needs you to pay the fee for the barber. I was just coming to pay. Actually, he's pretty good barber. Don't leave it until the last minute next time. Hey, pal. Derek needs you to pay the fee for the barber. Look, asshole. I'm not in the mood. Why don't you get out of my face before you get hurt? Ah, no can do, pal. Derek wants his money. Derek can kiss my ass. What's that fat fuck gonna do? Have me killed? Hey, you said it, not me. Why don't you give it a try then, asshole? Oh, that's gotta hurt. Good. Let's see if you can even touch me. What's the matter, Baldy? Kick the shit out of him! Okay. Anybody else got a fucking problem with paying for the fucking barber? That's right. Fuck off, all of you. Got his money already. Here's the money, boss man. Good job. Here's your share. I watched you take care of Bill. You were good. Steve damn near got his ass kicked when he tried that. Right, Steve? Yeah, right, Derek. Here's a bonus for sorting him out. Thanks. The guy's been a real fucking pain. Now get out of here, kid. I gotta be getting back to business. Hey, say hello to your mother for me. Tell her you got yourself a job as my new assistant. Yeah, will do. I'll see you later. Vito, I almost forgot. Joe called. He wants you should meet him at Freddy's. Ain't got nothing else for you right now, kid.
God Save the Queen is the British national anthem, but as of today, Londoners are singing a new song. God, we love those Spitfires may be the more popular song now, as British Spitfire fighter planes have finally taken out a key Nazi factory, one that produced fuel for none other than the dreaded B-2 rocket. After several weeks of merciless punishment by this long-range menace, Londoners can breathe a sigh of relief now that the Royal Air Force appears to have severely crippled the Nazi terror for the foreseeable future. For Press Radio News, I'm Lowell Harris. for all you night know. This Empire Classic Radio, Easy LA.
Hey, where the hell you been? I came right over as soon as you called. What's going on? You remember the wise guys we used to see when we was kids? Yeah, why? The guy we're meeting here is one of them. His name's Henry Tomasino. I think he's got something big for us. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. We're done with the small-time jobs. It's time to make some real shuttle. Here, he's coming. Don't say nothing stupid. Hey, Henry, how are you? How are you, Joe? This the guy? Yeah, this is Vito, an old friend of mine. Good to meet you, Henry. You vouch for him? Absolutely, Henry. Trust him with my life. Okay, listen, I got a job for you. The money's good. I need gas stamps. They're worth a the fortune now because of the gas shortage. Where can we get them? In the Office of Price Administration. Uh, that's a federal government agency. Isn't that a little risky? What? Too much for you? No, no, no. Just trying to think of how we can pull it off. Ah, it can't be that hard. The stamps are kept in the safe at night, but the keys are probably around there somewhere. You got somebody inside? Yeah, one of our guys. His sister works there. Can she help us out? Ask her yourself. Her name's Maria Agnello. Here's the address. Tell her I sent you. All right, what about the safe? What if the keys aren't there? That's your problem. So what's the job pay? I'll give you 600 bucks for 10,000 gallons worth of stamps. Okay, we're in. No, no, I need Vito to do this alone. I got another job for you, Joe. So? What do you say, Vito? Yeah, sure. Hey, and don't forget to take a piece with you. You never know what's gonna happen. Better to be safe than sorry. I got be. Wait, wait, wait. This isn't some liquor store stick-up. I want this to be a clean job. If you kill anybody, your cut drops to a third. Gabish? Yeah, I got it. No problem. Okay, when you're done, you come back here and we'll settle up. All right, I'll see Good you. Good luck, Vito.